Hello, my name is Malcolm Self, and I'm a leader in the Order of St. Luke the Physician, commonly known as OSL. When you get up in the morning, you likely have a routine to get ready for the day. You brush your teeth, take a shower, comb your hair, eat breakfast, and so on. Taking care of your body is essential for good health. Without exercise, your muscles atrophy. Without food, your body starves. Without washing, your body stinks. You learn this care when you're young and it becomes a habit. It's not something you think about. It's something you just do. Spiritual habits have the same purpose, but many of us did not have those taught to us when we were children. However, it is never too late to learn. By adopting a new set of habits, we can take care of our spiritual relationship with God. That care, in turn, affects our relationship with everyone else we encounter in life. If we choose to nurture our spirit with the same concern we give our body, we must find and adopt a rule for regular care of the spirit if we are to seek true healing. Here are some habits you will want to incorporate into your spiritual life. These habits are based on the rule of life that is followed by members in the International Order of St. Luke the Physician. If you would like to know more about this healing ministry, there will be information at the end of this lesson. Set a time to pray daily for the ministry of healing, remembering to use the Lord's Prayer with the special intention that God's will may be done in you and in all humanity. Jesus taught us to pray for God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. We may use that prayer with special intent that the kingdom come in some particular person or situation. It is, in fact, a healing prayer when used that way. All prayer for healing is for God's will to be done in bringing his wholeness into our lives. Our prayer is not to change God's mind, but to open the way for his will to be done. Prayer is dialogue with God. It is in this intimate conversation that we come to know God. We reveal ourselves in what we say. We come to know others in what we hear them say. Your prayer must include listening to God as well as talking to Him. We cannot continue to breathe out unless we breathe in. In exercise, we breathe out waste from our body's metabolism. In prayer, we breathe out disease. In exercise, we breathe in oxygen for our body's health. In prayer, we breathe in the Spirit of God for our total well-being. As you pray, remember that God has called you to be a part of His family. It is easy to find fault in others. In Ephesians 4.13, we are told to reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. It is essential to pray for our union with God and with one another. Pray that the world might see us as a single body whose bond of love is our witness to the presence of God's kingdom. This may mean forgiving someone. Forgiveness and healing go hand in hand. Studies have shown over 50% of illnesses are due to unforgiveness. Take time each day to read from the New Testament. There's a difference between the Old and the New Testaments as there is a difference between the Law and the Gospels. We read the Old Testament as law. It tells us of our covenant with God that was impossible for us to keep. The New Testament tells us of the covenant that God enables us to keep by His healing love through His Son, Jesus Christ. It is His healing love that we need to feed into our bodies, minds, souls, and spirits. Each day, Focus on his promises in the New Testament. All Christian traditions celebrate communion. By receiving communion on a regular basis, we form a union with God in Christ and with one another. Through this unique experience, we find a source of healing and forgiveness for ourselves and others. Actively seek a healthy body, mind, and spirit. In doing so, you will be a fit and willing vessel for his will. Eat food that nourishes your body, exercise your muscles, and seek medical treatment for illness. When we seek medical treatment for an illness, we should also seek prayer for healing. You must attempt to become whole and not just functional. Go to Jesus in prayer for the little things as well as the big things. 
It is important to cultivate the gifts God has given you for the work of healing. Study and educate yourself about Christian healing. This includes engaging in active service to others and being mindful of the revelations God gives you. God wants us to practice using our gifts. It is more than just learning and following some method. It means learning to work with God rather than for God. The most important things in our lives we learn by doing. We learn to talk by talking, to walk by walking, to love by loving. We learn to minister by ministering. The first part of ministering is learning to listen. Don't hide your talent, but be a good steward of what God has given you and be mindful of what you are doing with your gifts. Seek spiritual growth as God's instrument for the healing of others. Anticipate the next lesson from God. You're not supposed to know everything. Be thankful for what you receive from God, but continue seeking Him face to face. Sharing our stories brings a closer connection to others. Your story, your insights, your testimony can inspire change or bring hope to someone else. It is a wonderful way to honor God, and it gives us a way to say thank you to Him as we acknowledge the importance of what we have learned or experienced. When you share your healing story, you inspire healing in someone else. We cannot do God's work in our own strength. We are to exercise the authority of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit. This will keep us mindful that we are not working for God, but with God. When we ask, we receive His grace to do with Him that which we cannot do by ourselves. Have you ever tried to adopt a new habit or get rid of a bad one? It is so easy to jump in and just do it. However, sustaining that habit over a long time can be difficult. Adopting spiritual habits are no different. Consistency and repetition are critical. A place where prayer is offered regularly will soon have a feeling of warmth that comes from the presence of God. Prayer becomes easier and more comfortable as you take time in silence to listen to God. When developing your prayer habit, don't try to do it all at once. The Lord's Prayer is a good place to begin. Then read a bit of the New Testament, perhaps one of the healing stories from the Gospels. Talk to God about one of the people you know who needs ministry and try to pray with that person. As you become accustomed to meeting God daily, you will add more spiritual habits as God leads you. It will be easier as each habit takes hold and your spirit will grow along with your desire to spend this time with God. If you try to do too much initially, there's a temptation to give up. If you make it too easy, it does not exercise your spirit sufficiently. Each habit should feel just a bit out of reach, but close enough that you will not despair and get frustrated. The only way to begin is just do it. Just start praying. There will be adjustments, but there will be a dimension of stability to your life and growth that you will find no other way. Thank you, and God bless. If you feel you're being called to be a participant, not a spectator, in the healing ministry of Jesus Christ, then join others with the same calling. We welcome you to become a member of OSL. Please visit our website or contact our office.